Hey, I'm McSpadden, Tahlequah, Oklahoma. I live at 317 South Bluff Avenue, Tahlequah. I was born about uh, four miles south of Tahlequah, but I've uh, lived in this house my father built when I was about five years old, and it's about 82 years old now, and I still live there by myself. Tell us something about your early days, the, the early times that you recall in in this house. Well, my father's children, my brother and sisters, were all raised there, and after my How many brothers and sisters did you One have? brother and two sisters, and one half-sister later on. And they were, could you give us their names now? Florence was the oldest girl. And Vance was a second child, and Mary was my sister, just older than me, two years older than me. Florence married Phil Samuel, and uh, Vance married uh, Tot Foreman, Tot McSpadden. And Benita and Mary married Tom Sh uh, Crookshank, and they lived in Dallas till they both passed away. My half sister Cherry married Roy Hines of Tahlequah here. And, uh, and whom did you marry? Uh, Callie McNair. We married in 1906 and uh, lived in this one house together for in 58 home years, home place, 58 mm -hmm. years. Uh, what schools were here then? The male, well, before, in our early days, we went to school at the our public school, which was located down about the Duncan Springs, they called it. Then uh, she went to the Baptist Mission, and I went to the Presbyterian Mission that was located here. Then after that... Now were those the, were those the uh, mission schools that were known as the seminary? No, that was before. Was before we, the seminary? No, not before, but uh, before we went to school oh, at I the see. seminary. Mm -hmm. And she went to the male semin a uh, female seminary and I went to the male seminary yes. and she I uh, was at the male seminary for two years about 1899-1900 and my father sent me up to a Methodist school at Fayette, Missouri. I was up there two years and my wife finished the school year I believe it was 1902 then she went to, ha uh, to school at someplace in Missouri, I believe it is, not Howard Payne, but out, right out of St. Louis a piece. What was that mm. school? Um, wasn't Stevenville. Uh, I don't know that school. I can't think of the <laughs> name right at <laughs> all, but it's right out of St. Louis. She was up there to school. I heard, uh, I have heard it said that the, uh, these, uh, the male and the and the the men and the women seminary were the oldest schools, the oldest uh, seminaries. Uh, no, the second oldest school west of the Mississippi. Well, I understood as the uh, oldest, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, last night on TV, someone said the second, but I uh huh, and. Yes, uh -huh. and that could have been the oldest one then. That was the oldest one. Well, that's interesting. Uh, uh, what year was the fire? I've heard him speak of the... 1910, one Sunday morning. And the, the, children, the, the, the school had been combined, con combined at that time. There were girls and boys both at the male seminary. Oh. But the well, the female had, I mean, the, the women had already burned, hadn't it? No, well, that was the yeah. first female seminary. Well, I mean the first one, though. Didn't it have a fire, too? Yeah. yeah. No, not this one, but not the very first one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. So then it was combined. My oldest sister was going to school at the old seminary when it burned. Oh? Mm -hmm. Did they find out the cause of it? Or not of the first one. I never did hear what caused the first one. Mm-hmm. 
And then the second one that was established is uh, the one that we have now. And uh, uh, the seminary, the, the men's seminary that burned, uh, I believe they said Easter, Easter Sunday 1910. morning. 1910. In 1910. Uh, did they ever find out anything about the... Well, most of the students were at church in town. And there were some younger boys left out there, and they thought it started up in the cupola, and they thought some of those boys that were left out there were smoking up there, oh, and yes. probably started it. Slipped off. Uh -huh. But when it was announced at the church, the seminary was on fire, everybody got up and left, and those... Ran to help fire. And the uh, ones that uh, lived out there ran all the way out there to try to get there before they mm -hmm. lost the clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But was most it, of them lost everything. Was it a they, total loss? Uh -huh. How did the students feel about it? Were they... Uh, well, of course, the, most of the students, they, I don't know how they felt about it, but my wife and I went out and got uh, two of the boys and kept them, some of my, kid, my kin folks. Mm -hmm. and kept them till their parents said after. Then the school did continue then? Yeah, well, it continued at the, the, I believe the Northeastern was started about that time, mm -hmm. and uh, they took over the, the schooling. Mm -hmm. Well, I had often wondered how that, uh, how that was uh, managed to continue with the schools that they did, with mm -hmm. as many. Yeah, it turned into a normal school. Yeah, it turned mm -hmm. into a normal school, yeah. Uh, um, let's go back just a little bit now. We, I jumped to 1910 when I, I, you told me that uh, you uh, were in school and 19 and your first year in school was... Well, at the seminary it was 1899, But your very first year in public school. Oh, that was in school down here by <coughs> what's known now as the Duncan Spring, mm -hmm. that down here in town. In, ta in the town here? Uh-huh. Uh, how much was it to Tahlequah then? Well, I think this school was about, uh, they had about two teachers, probably. Two teachers? Uh-huh. Uh, a little frame were building. There, were there other buildings that, uh, that are there any that, landmarks that we have standing now? Well, in, not around that school, that, uh, that Duncan property were probably standing there in the old springs and and what far from the courthouse down to where this school was located. And I lived on the bluff, oh, about seven, eight blocks from where this school was. Mm -hmm. Are there any pictures of this old school building or anything I don't know of any in the museum, maybe? I don't know of any of the old public schools. I understand school. there are. Well, I didn't know. I don't remember seeing one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, uh, Tahlequah town proper uh, was a post office and uh, what other? It was the capital, you know, the yes, Cherokee of the Nation. the Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a mm -hmm. capital building or a... Mm -hmm. And it's still standing. Yeah. And uh, we... Uh, what other places were there that you well, recall? Well, the old National Hotel was a very, very prominent uh, place right. here. I've heard of it that. it was torn down and uh, rebuilt by a uh, hotel building. But my great-grandmother built the old National Hotel. I had it built. Now, who was she? Uh, Aunt Susan Taylor. She was my great-grandmother and uh -huh. had this hotel built. Then uh, her daughter and Aunt uh, uh, Jane, Aunt Jane Thompson, was my grandmother. She and Dr. Jeter Thompson. And they had the hotel for till they finally sold it to Aunt Eliza Alberti. She was the one that raised my wife. Oh. And at her death, it came back into my wife's hand and my hands. Well. So, so it's quite a yes, history of the old National Hotel. Yes. Uh, uh, skipping back a little bit now, what uh, subjects did you uh, study in your seminary days? Well, the history. Did you have and Latin and? You know, I had some Latin, history, of course, and 
English. And Latin was required, I yes. suppose, then. Yeah. And uh, English. English and mathematics. We had some wonderful teachers out there. Oh, Captain Smith was one of them as a mathematics teacher. And um, the, the W.T. Thorne. Do you the remember Logan's. anything particular about his methods of classwork or something like that? It'd be interesting well, compared with the I, I got more out of his classes in, in uh, mathematics in any place. He was very thorough with us boys. Wonderful man, wonderful teacher. And of course, the new math today probably <laughs> <laughs> might not. <laughs> no, it might not set so well. Uh, the um, uh, subjects <coughs> that you had uh, kept you pretty busy, but did you have time for athletics? Or? Oh, yes. We had uh, drill teams, and we also had football and baseball. And drill teams? What were uh, those? Uh, uh, football teams like they have today. And uh, we played games against uh, Henry Kendall College, which was located in Muskogee, and yes. Bacon College, and several other schools. Yes. What did you play? I played uh, halfback on the football oh, team. Oh, you did. And shortstop on the baseball team. And do you have any pictures of those early teams? Oh, yes. Oh, I'd <laughs> love to see that. I've got a lot of them. Uh, well, we must, uh, we must get hold of, look at some of those now. Um, the, uh, uh, you, you spoke of uh, uh, what we, who we called Aunt Sally McSpadden. Uh, the that's my one connection with the McSpadden, other than Clem, uh, that I remember best. Uh, tell us something about uh, uh, Miss Sally. Or well, my Uncle Tom married Aunt Sally. I don't remember the date, but they lived there in Chelsea. And, of course, Will Rogers was Aunt Sally's brother. brother. And he came through this section of the country quite a bit. The family of Gilders that lived out south of town was Will's aunt. And, uh, Ms. Ms. Gilder. She was a sister of Will Rogers' mother. Yes. And he came down here and visited quite often with uh -huh. his aunt, the Gilders. Yes. Uh, a few weeks ago, we interviewed uh, Mrs. Love, and it was my privilege to meet and to interview Mrs. Milam. And uh, uh, they, I got as much as I could from them about their mother, mm -hmm. about uh, Miss Sally. But you mentioned uh, 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 the funeral of her husband and of the beautiful prayer. She was a devout, very devout oh, Christian yes. woman. She sure was. And. Uh, would you tell us something a little bit more about her husband? And I never, we never, did, I never did know him. Well, my f father was the oldest of seven brothers, and Uncle Tom was a third. My father's oldest, and Uncle Joe, and then Uncle Tom. All right. And there's there's four of them located there in Cusco district, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they all married and lived around Chelsea. Then there's three of them located down here around where my father was. Mm -hmm. and so, and I... Where did he meet Miss Sally? I'm not sure just where they met. Up around Bonita, I expect, or Chelsea, someplace mm -hmm. along there. The old Rogers home was out from Ulaga. So he might have met up out there. Uh, well, there were many uh, country activities, you know, that took in the whole countryside then, too. Uh, Will Rogers, I believe, was supposed to have uh, done his first rope tricks at some of these big country fairs and things like that. So they could have met in some yeah. place like that. I know when Will came down here to rope with the boys, he always had a little different loop he threw over. Uh, and That's what won him fame, wasn't it? It called attention to him. Yeah. He was a showman from way back. Oh, yes, naturally. Uh, Will Jr. Uh, spoke uh, uh, in Oklahoma City recently about his father. And uh, uh, he mentioned the rope tricks, as he called them, and the things that, uh, um, that made it different. 
to just the average cowboys. Yeah, he roping. was a showman from way back. And then Paula mentioned some of the things there. When he left here to go to uh, South America, one of the Tahlequah boys went with him, a fellow named Dick Parrish. Oh, yes. Is he from Tahlequah? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they were quite friends. Oh, yes. All yeah, I knew those, this Dick Parrish quite well. Well, that's interesting. Um, going back to the Max Spadden family, were you well acquainted with the uh, uh, Tom and uh, Sally Max Spadden oh, yes. family? Mm -hmm. You were reared with those girls? And My wife and I had a big family, and that was one place we felt we were welcome, even with oh, our yes. children. <laughs> they were wonderful to us. Yeah. Um, um, <coughs> the... Uh, Tell us something of the pastimes of those days. Uh, were there old quilting parties, and uh, how did the young people amuse themselves other well, than the athletics you spoke of? Well, they'd have picnics and uh, dances. And square and, dances? Well, not altogether square dances. They are round dances. Were they some? Mm -hmm. Waltzes and all. Uh -huh. And, and the callers, did they have? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The callers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what instruments were used in their orchestra? Well, generally just uh, a, a violin, violin and a fiddle, they call fiddle, it. Uh, and yeah. Of course, accompanied with uh, two other instruments. We didn't generally. have to have the heavy drum beats, though, that we have now, do we? The old no. rock and roll type. Well, the uh, uh, at those dances, uh, uh, was, did the young people, uh, uh, did you have certain hours that you got in and uh, well, were your generally, parents pretty strict with you? Yeah, pretty strict. And they were generally at night. We used to, one of the old Murrow homes out here about uh, yes. a few miles, and uh, the Rosses, Bob Rosses' family lived there, and yes. they'd have us out for dances there. To, yes. at, uh, they had a wonderful rooms to dance in and we yeah. take our music out there with us and our girls and dates yeah we'd have a big oh, time uh, you went out a horse and buggy and buggy uh-huh didn't have any cars oh no <laughs> uh i was just wondering if they um uh, for instance i've heard my mother talk about going to the dances in east tennessee where they came from and uh, the young man brought a horse with a side saddle and she rode the side saddle into the dance. Yeah, that's when the women rode around here, they had the side saddle. My wife had her side saddle. I don't know what became of it. It was around home there a long, long an, time. It would certainly be an antique now, wouldn't, wouldn't it? it though? Um, they, I remember <coughs> the first riding skirt, they called it. Yeah. They didn't dare say pants, but the, the first riding skirt that my mother saw and she came home telling my father about this woman that rode with a riding skirt on it that was divided. Yeah, they had that skirt, riding skirt, to get on the side saddle. Yes. And ride. Um, right. The uh, uh, dances were, of course, uh, uh, was it for the whole family? Did the older people go with the well, young people? Well, a lot of times the chaperones would be older people. Yes. They'd go. Did they actually call them chaperones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't mind the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, on the campus, the, as you remember it, in the old uh, seminary, uh, do you remember any particular dating activities or between the when the the men and the women were separated in uh, into the two different seminaries, uh, was there any exchange of? Uh, well, at the female seminary, ever so often they'd have a ha invite the male seminary boys up there, and uh, we'd have um, a meeting up there, and they never would let us dance, however, but we could what visit. Was it a church? Huh? Was it a church-sponsored? No, it was uh, just a, a female seminary. But they didn't approve of the dance. No. 
uh, it, so Me, then it was just a conversation, yeah, meeting the girls in mm -hmm. a conversation. Making eyes. A chaperone. Making eyes at them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was the extent of it. Miss <laughs> um, Florence Wilson was a principal of the female seminary, and she was very, very strict. And uh, she wouldn't allow any dancing at all. She what about chapel activities? Was there a chapel service or? No, not especially anything like I don't that. Don't remember. No. I thought perhaps that it was. Uh, uh, I thought perhaps that it had to have a a religious background, maybe. Well, they were very religious. They, every Sunday, we'd the girls would all line up and march down to a certain church. And from the male seminary, they do the same. They, they lined up? Uh huh, and marched down to the with church. With the chaperone? No, with the, one of the teachers with them. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the boys were chaperoned too? Not necessarily. I guess some of the teachers were with them. <laughs> that wouldn't be the women's lib movement then, no. would it? Not <laughs> today. Um, the, uh, the young men that you remember, who were some of your closest friends? Well, in the seminary it. days, yes. Well, there's Dennis McNair. That was my wife's brother. We went to school together. Owen Grant. He lived at Stillwell. Do you know what any of them have been, are doing now or have done? Well, Owen Grant was a attorney over at Stillwell. He passed away just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And of course, Dennis McNair has passed away. And, then the, I roomed with uh, Bruce Garrett and Joe Ross at different times. Now that's the Rosses of the John Ross. No, well they can all right, but this Joe Ross lived. At, he had a their place was out from Locust Grove. Henry Ross, I think, was his father, but Joe and Felix were the two boys. The that, grand, probably the grandsons. Now uh, they're some kid to John Ross. Mm -hmm. I don't remember just how. But and the uh, the Cherokees um, in these schools were the uh, Cher was the Cherokee language still taught? No, it still wasn't used? taught. It, no, it wasn't taught out there. Just the English. But did the students teach it? I mean, speak it between themselves? The, some of the full bloods did. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of them. That, that did keep it alive. And, and playing with those full bloods, I got so I could talk some and understand quite a bit. But it's a language if you don't use, you'll forget. That's right. I know a few words yet, but very few. Mm -hmm. um, the, do you remember the uh, any of the crafts and arts that the, the women did? Not uh, at were they taught in the seminary? I don't know whether they were or not. They weren't out at you the seminary. You were in the boys' part, weren't you? Well, uh, were you taught anything uh, such as, um, oh, any of the building trades or uh, agriculture? No. Mm -hmm. Yours was purely the <coughs> science and art mm -hmm. part, but not any of the occupational no. sciences were taught there. We had some wonderful teachers there, though, would not Could you, do you remember uh, some of their names? Yeah. Uh, Captain Smith was uh, one, and uh, W.T. Thorne, and uh, one of the Harnages, Jess Harnage, and the Logans, of course. They were wonderful people. Oh, uh, from Norman? Uh-huh. Well, uh, yeah. who were some of your favorite teachers? Is that a fair uh, question? Yeah, well, I think W.T. Thorne and Captain Smith were two of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Seemed like I learned more to them than anybody. Were they pretty strict with you in their classroom activities? Oh, yes. As yeah. well as campus activities? Yeah. One boy out there used to give them trouble and he used to say, whip old scored, then they can open school. <laughs> morning. You mean they really whipped them? No. <laughs> he was in so much trouble. Oh, that's that the that expression. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, what was your, did you have a certain rising hour and a certain time for the light bells at night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of lights did you have? Yeah, cool oil. Cool oil. But they had to go out at a certain time. Mm -hmm. uh, so your studying had to be done then, oh, and during yeah. study hours, mm -hmm. study times. And what time did they get you up? Oh, I don't remember. Plenty early, though. <laughs> uh, uh, did you get a... 
uh, a breakfast. Uh, was that served in a at in that regular dining room? In a dining room, mm -hmm. and you didn't get your own or anything. No, all the meals were served in the dining room. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how expensive education was then? I'd be interesting to what it is now. Um, I made it about five dollars a month out that seminary for board and for board and, and everything tuition. No, uh, I think I'm not sure that I'm right, but I think that's about it. When I went up in Missouri, they, my father sent me a $12 check every month. That took care of my board and room. And Laundry, <laughs> everything. Well, uh, I think that's interesting in the light of the current oh, inflated my. problems with getting a child yes, through college now. Uh, my son happened to want medicine, turned out to be a doctor, and that is really an expensive oh my, thing. So many years. So this five dollars and twelve dollars sounds <laughs> almost unbelievable to me. I'm <laughs> not too sure about the seminary, but of course I'm still that. Uh, you do remember. Mm -hmm. You do remember that. Yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, what uh, <coughs> denomination? What church did uh, you and your wife? Were you affiliated with? I was, my grandfather's a Methodist minister here, and I was a Methodist, of course. And my wife's grandfather led a tangent over the Trail of Tears, oh. and he was a Baptist minister. And we both read. What was his name? Jesse Bushhead. Oh, the Bushhead. Yeah. Oh. And. Uh, now there's a Bushhead at Claremore. Yeah. What relation? Well, Dr. Jess Bushhead that used to be there, he's passed away now, he was first cousin of my wife. He was Den Chief Dennis Bushhead's son. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, the, the chief. Yeah. Now, uh, how, how were the early elections held in the Cherokees? I've been told they were the most democratic people in their elections and, uh, and the way they conducted their government. Well, they had a two system. The Downing represented the Democrats now, and the National was, used to be the Republican Party. And uh, under the Cherokee laws, they let us 18 boys and girls vote. Well, uh, the boys did. I don't know whether the girls did or not. But I've been voting ever since I was 18 years old. So this is nothing new then. No, nothing. We thought we had a new law on the books. <laughs> uh, then this, uh, uh, when you elected your chief mm -hmm. in the Cherokee, yeah. it was done with a party system? Oh, yes. A two-party system? Yeah. National and Downing. Well, I do know. We had some uh, great, great campaigns back there. Yes. You mean they really campaigned? Oh, yes. Uh, did you have a... A certain election day, and uh -huh. how were the ballots cast? Well, like they do now, I guess, just in the ballot box and all. I don't remember too much just how they were handled. Uh-huh. Well, that's, <coughs> that's interesting to know what influence you've had on all of the legal system of... I used to have quite a time. Uh, one time, and uh, I believe Bushhead was chief, and uh, one of the mazes was elected on the downing ticket. And it seems the Bushhead crowd wouldn't give up the office. And they had a big folly on both sides. And the Mays crowd waited till the Bushheads all went home one night and and old Hooli Bell kicked the door down and got in the office and installed Mays. <laughs> There's been stories written about that. You probably read them. Well uh did it last? I mean, no, it got over. It, it got by without any bloodshed or trouble. But it looked like it's going to be trouble, plenty of it. I imagine. Uh, did they just just move in yeah. that night? Yeah. Uh huh. Took over. I've heard of the cowboys uh, uh, tying the rope around the little courthouse at Guthrie and dragging it over. To <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know that we'd had this uh, uh -oh, take over here. You've had some wonderful times back. Yes. You remember some of the uh, Cherokee chiefs that have uh, been elected in your lifetime? Well, I believe uh, one or two of the Mays and uh, Buffington. And, uh, Those are all familiar names, yes. And 
Who? John Buffington. Yeah, John Buffington. He was a tall, big man. And the bushy head. And the bushy head and the maze. And the maze. Mm -hmm. uh, My. Were the Maytubbies Cherokee? Hmm? Maytubbies? No, they're Creeks. Uh, Creeks. Creeks. No, they're, they're not. They're not the Cherokee. They're not. Yeah. Choctaw. 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 I believe so. Uh, and who is your current chief? Uh, who is the one now? Keela. And oh, yes. we are going to have an election on the 14th of August to elect a chief, new chief. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't think Kilo would have a bit of trouble. He's done so much That's for the Cherokees. True. He really is an oh, outstanding man and in Oklahoma. It's shown more. Cherokees, but you can just see the well, difference. Why don't you have anyone to run against him? Yeah, there's some fellow, um, I forget Ralph. his name. Yeah, Keel gonna run against him, but I don't think he'll have any. But there will be one or two I that might so. ask mm -hmm. for candidacy. Mm -hmm. um, the um, uh, there was one other question I wanted to ask about your very early days in the public school. Uh, you said that, that it was a two-room school building. Yeah, uh, two class. I think they had two teachers. Uh, two teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember their names? Uh, Miss Collins. It was my first teacher I went to. I don't call Do you remember how you were how you were started for reading and things like that? Do you remember No, that? no, I was about uh, about six years old, I guess, when I first started. I just wondered if it was the old system of word recognition or by phonics or how. And I remember Miss Boudinot, she was a wonderful teacher. She used to live at Fort Gibson later on. But those two teachers were sort of outstanding in my mind. Well, good. Well, this has certainly been nice talking with you. I appreciate so much your giving us this information. No, I don't know if you talk too much or not. No. Ben Chandler, 1005 East Finland, Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Born in Stillwell, Oklahoma, in the territory, 1893. Now we go from there. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, first, let's start with your birthplace, your earliest. Birthplace of Stillwell, Oklahoma. And that was 1893, June the 7th. Something about your parents. Well, my mother came over the Trail of Tears from North Carolina. And her name? Fanny E. Chandler. It was sharp. It, or she was a sharp. Mm -hmm. And e. she sharp. walked all the way. They crossed the river. And they put them across the river at uh, Fort Smith. And her sister died and was buried there on the bank of the mm -hmm. river at Fort Smith. And then they come on up into Stillwell. My father was a merchant. And uh, he operated a store there at what they call now Strawberry Springs. Mm -hmm. And from there on, we was... And, uh, and he met your mother. Well, they, uh, they, they married in, in the territory, mm -hmm. but he was a white man, but he had his hair down to his belt, and he was raised with Indians. He talked a good Indian language. Mm -hmm. So he came with him on uh, the Australia Tears trip into the territory, you mm -hmm. see. Were there many who, who came that way just instead of Well, she home? told me there's four or five wagons, and they brought their cows. They, we lived on a farm after mm -hmm. that, and we kept one of them old cows till she died and raised a bunch of calves off of her. They thought so much of her. That the yeah, old cow walked tied behind the wagon. Well, yeah. She said there was a, a lot of them died on the way. There was a great deal of sickness. Yeah, and the, the young children, she was 12 years old mm -hmm. at the time she come across. She... Uh, the, uh, uh, the soldiers that, that uh, accompanied they, them. They, they, they brought them to the Arkansas River, and that's where the soldiers quit them. They put them across the river and just turned them into the woods, you know. Uh, how did they manage to make their living? To well, they, they farmed, and, and of course they... I mean, until they could get their crop started. That I don't know how they... Uh, well, they, they went to, went right into farming, and, and uh, my dad, father got up mm -hmm. here and opened up a store. He was a school teacher. The Cherokee, he taught 
the Cherokees had so much culture, and yeah. they brought so much um, know-how with yeah. them. Well, they had good farms where they, where they run them off from in North Carolina, Georgia, right. see. Mm -hmm. yes. they, my, my mother's folks were, were considered pretty wealthy people in, in uh -huh. Georgia, see. Uh -huh. But they had to leave oh, everything some of them there. Were outstanding. Yeah, yeah, they were. It was the Morris family, and they they were they were pretty well off. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had slaves. They brought the slaves with them. Uh huh. Come with them. Well, uh, uh, when they when they settled here, uh, did they rebuild very much as they as their old homes were? Some of these houses that uh, yeah that we uh, see now are very much oh, like the old uh, yeah. colonial homes. Yeah. Well, now the my old home place, we we moved up to a place uh, called Prairie City, and, and then changed down to Ogeechee. And uh, that's an Indian name. Yeah, that means coming daylight. Oh. And uh, we had a home there that we bought off a doctor. And that old house, I guess, hundred years old. And this Ogeechee Farms bought all that land, and they burnt it down here a while back. Oh. They ought to let that stood there. I thought. Yeah. Well, you know, of course. You don't mean it was burned on purpose? Yeah, the fellow who owned that Ogeechee Farms, his cattle ranch, burned it. And I went up there, his burning one day, and I come by. I live spot, but I just happened to get up there. And there's a rock we had on the back doorstep that the Indians used to cover corn with. Yeah. It was made in the shape of a fish, and they'd drug it, mm -hmm. they'd stick it down the ground and then drag it over. I wanted to get that rock, but I couldn't find it. Somebody else got it. Okay. <laughs> that's, we're losing so much that. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where was your education started, other well, than at your mother's knee? Uh, <laughs> I will get you. came from such culture, uh, evidently you got a lot of that oh, yes. in your home. Well, she told me a lot. Of, I know a lot about what happened back in that country, back during the Civil War and all up through there. I've been on, she, I've got that all up there in my head, you yes. know. Well, well I started you? my first uh, career in the did education. They have did they have a part in that? Did the Indians participate in the that? Civil War? Oh yes, yeah. Uh, were they more or less forced to, or was that? I, I don't know how. Did they uh, feel well, I think they were in a way that forced. They felt both. Of course, was because they made them go. Yes. You see, they could catch them. A lot of them took them to the woods and hid mm -hmm. out. Well, they had to protect their property. Yeah. Some of them had. Well, their they the North would come through and take part of your stuff, and the South would come back yeah. maybe and give you some of it back. That's mm -hmm. the way they went, and they had their horses and mules. They'd have to take them out into the timber and hide them while right. the army was going through. Army, yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, <coughs> when the decree came uh, under President Jackson. Yeah, he's the man that run them out of, out yeah. of North Carolina. Uh, when, he, when that decree came, uh, do you remember what your mother, how she felt about it, how deeply? Well, they felt all the bad. That's mm -hmm. I, I know that. Because it was a serious problem to them. It's something that never happened well, before. Roots, yeah. Mean. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, did was your mother able to make her adaptation to Oklahoma or the Indian Territory? It was then. Was she able to make her adaptations and? Oh yes, she adapted very, very well. Well, oh yes. Well, she raised a big family. There's ten of us. That's so pretty, <laughs> pretty busy, yeah. Uh, then uh, your education, uh, aside from these stories yeah. that your mother told you, uh, was there a school building near there? That well, you we went to school. First went to school, we went to a school called play, Fairland, and uh, they had to pay so much a day for us to go, and they wouldn't unlock the door. And we put up a big box, and the teacher and everybody crawled through the window and back in and out. And our desks were made out of good boxes, you know. It's, uh, I went there for a while. Well, why would they make it? Uh, they uh, they got in. They got into some kind of a racket over that. It was about that away for about a week or two before they even let us come in the door. So they and forbid you them. Anyway. They uh, crawled in. <laughs> Teachers and everybody. Yeah, everybody went through the right window. On. Well, went right on. They didn't stop this friction deal, you know. Yeah. Well, now, is that uh, because of the uh, lack of taxes that, to pay? Well, oh, I don't think so. so I don't, because uh, we, we, they had to pay so much a day for us. So the Indians did, the white people didn't have to pay. They're just charging the Indians so much a day to go to school. Then I went to a uh, little old school, Ogeechee, 
back to Ogidi. And then from there to, uh, to uh, the seminary, I guess. Yeah. I left seminary. Now that was taught in English. Mm -hmm, that taught in English. I went to seminary, and then the seminary burned down. I went to Brown's Business College here a while. Then I went over to Drawn's Business College in Muskogee, and that's where I quit. I went to work for them in the department and worked for them mm -hmm. quite a while. So then that was a, a federal uh -huh, that's a federal job. Federal mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, did you, during your time that you were in this seminary, uh, do you remember any particular <coughs> subjects that you liked better than others? Well, I was only about 13 years old, see. When you went to yeah, the seminary? Yeah, yeah. And um, reading and writing and arithmetic was, seemed to be the big, Those were big deal. Words. That's, that's what we had. Mm -hmm. i tell you something about that. Out there at that seminary, you could pay your board, you see, or you could work for your board. Oh. So I worked for my board, washed dishes. Mm -hmm. They had a big dining room. There's about, oh, I don't know, 100 more of them boys out there. And we had a lot of dishes washed, but they had a lot of dishwashers. Yeah. And Working they had a big trough back the back where they took the slop, you know. Mm -hmm. now, if you broke a dish, they'd be caught you with it. They'd give you a demerit. We'd put the dish in a dish pan full of water and go throw it in that trough. <laughs> you go out there sometimes and see the trough half full of dish. <laughs> no, no, that was about that burning down. I don't know. My brother was there at that time when it burned down. I wasn't there that year. Mm -hmm. But uh, they give them boys demerits. You see, and if you had a demerit, you couldn't come to town. They let you come to town on Saturday. Every Saturday, if you didn't have any, anything against your record. So, Three or four old boys out there. I think one of them boys, what I get, set it afire. Well, one that had demerits uh, that couldn't. Huh? One he had demerits couldn't come. He's mad. Oh. Uh, them poor boys are kind of selfish when they get, get yeah. mad. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, it could have been. It could have been so. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what he told me. That, and he, I think he knew. Of course, he knew the boy. Mm -hmm. But you know what happened out there. So this business of uh, retaliation isn't a new, and rebellion no, is not so not new, new. is it? It's not new, but what happened out there, uh, they all lost all their clothes. Mm -hmm. Everything they had got burned up. Yeah. And at the time then, you know, money was tight. Oh, my. And it took money to buy clothes. So me and my brother went out there, and we had one pair of Sunday shoes. We come to church here on Sunday. That's why they sent us though, every Sunday morning. We'd all march to church here. He'd go one Sunday, and I'd wear the shoes the next Sunday. He'd go, and I'd go, see, he'd wear, I'd wear the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and you wore the shoes, then? Oh, I wore the shoes, uh, yeah. Well, let's closer. I'm afraid that is the best. Let us close to you. All right. Uh, the uh, uh, shoes, then, were difficult to come by. You ain't kidding. We had that one Sunday pair, and then the pair for the wear through the week, mm -hmm. you know. But to tell you about that board room, those fellows that paid board, they had to scrub that whole building once a month. Even they did pay boards. They take the uh, stairways and everything had to be scrubbed. We, the, us fellows that were working for a board, didn't have to do that. You, you, you did yours on the dishes. You done the, on the dishes, the dishes and a broom. Yeah. Uh, were the foods very different to what Oh, it's it good food. It's good food. But them boys always Must claimed. Must have been nourishing food. Yeah, well, it was molasses and cornbread and beans and stuff like that. It'll stay with you. But a lot of them boys griped about it. Oh, that's yeah, but they had, we had some colored cooks, had two colored cooks, and, and uh, one of these colored cooks had a buggy and a horse, and I took care of his horse. So I get a piece of cake once in a while, nobody else could get, you know, we had a hole punched in the wall, so he had to go out the stairway to his room, and he'd push it through the hole. <laughs> and they, uh, uh, the dating customs, you were 13, you were a little bit young yeah. for that, but your brother might. Yeah, he's older than I am, about yes. two years. He, he was just about he two years. Yeah, he's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the only one living out of four brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, on the Cherokee uh, government, <coughs> pardon me, government, uh, could you give us something as to the uh, policies? of the, uh, since you were with the federal, 
the group. Yeah. It's something about the policies that were used in those early days. Oh, I don't know. Was, uh, we was we were just looking after the Indians, and mm -hmm. I worked through the whole five tribes as, mm -hmm. as assistant field clerk and uh, land appraiser and government mm -hmm. farmer and what have you know. And we went out. We had to go out and buy everything that that they the they had the, if they had money in the mm -hmm. department. And you could buy them stuff, and before they get home, they'd sell it. To, all they was wanting was to get a hold of the money, you know, they'd buy them a load of wire to go out the fence home, and they'd go out there and he couldn't find the wire, while he sold it, and, and they'd sell it. We'd buy teams for mules, and they'd sell them. How did they use it for? But, uh, oh, they'd try to farm a little bit, a little mm -hmm. patches. But they, they do, they, this, uh, he was buying a team of mules, all, all, they didn't have any title invested in them because they belonged to the government. We branded them USID. Yeah. Well, they'd uh, wait in the wintertime and the hair grow down over them brand. Then they could, they'd sell them somebody. We'd find out about it, go get them, bring them back. I'll just lose. <laughs> well, the, uh, uh, the Indians uh, uh, was there very much resentment toward the the federal authorities? Well, oh, yes, there was quite a bit. There there quite a bit. They didn't like statehood either. And uh, well, you see, yeah. the territory went into the mm -hmm. state. They didn't like that. They wanted it their own. Yeah, they I wanted understand. it their own. Uh, <clears throat> in the elections that you can remember, could you tell us something about the Cherokee election? Yes. No, I don't know much about that. They, you see, they had their council house and mm -hmm. they had their chief and the assistant chief, and then they elected their councilman. Maybe I, I think there's eight or ten or twelve of those councilmen. Mm -hmm. And then they, they developed, of course, they, like he told you a while ago, mm -hmm. they'd have the two parties, and then they'd have their election. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I don't know too much about that. It's been too far back from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, um, um, the coming election, I understand there might be more than the one candidate uh, in the coming election? Now? Uh -huh. You mean this the Keeler? one in August? Yeah, yes. There's, there's, there's uh, Keeler is one, and then well, they, I don't he, know. He has been for in yeah, August. Oh, I know he had. I know him. Uh -huh. But this and fellow Groundhog so started to run, but I understand he's quit. So and this other fellow, Keen, is, I had a letter from him that he's trying for it, but I don't know how to, uh, this, mm -hmm. the whole tribe will vote. Uh -huh, but the election will be in August. Yeah, it's in August. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is uh, and Tahlequah is still the the capital. capital. Uh -huh. Oh yes. Yeah. Cherokee. Um, then the voting will be done here. Yeah, it'll be done here. Oh, I I have an idea. You can mail in your vote. I, I imagine because we've already had mm -hmm. sign applications for a mm -hmm. vote. Excuse well, me, blank. Do you have to? Uh, you have a certain amount of Cherokee blood, or as long well, as you have not, any. Not necessarily that. It's if you're on the roll. You've got to have a roll number before you can vote. That's right. That's and the Cherokee don't roll It's is not a degree of blood. Uh -huh. it, it is established already. Yeah, it's all. Well, yeah, we have roll books mm -hmm. made up with the uh, roll numbers in it. They say that's one of the most perfect genealogical books. Genealogy. They kept books that we yeah. had. Uh, that I just noticed they had this little old payment here a while back. They had some new ones made. I had an old one. They're, they're, they're an antique if you can get a hold of them. You, mm -hmm. Well, I worked for the department. There was plenty of them. You could just pick up one up there and where we wanted to go. But now you can't find them. Oh, I've got one. I've got one. My sister in law got I never will get it back. But uh, <laughs> I'd like to have it. But I was up there at J, and they had some new ones. I'd show like that one. And it's a whole bigger print, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it's clean. Them old ones have been used. They've been used so much. <laughs> yeah. They're really uh, they, uh, uh, The voting then will be. Uh, by the the uh, new role. Yeah. Well, it'll just be. Uh, uh, I imagine it'll be like if you're voting an absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. See, that you're going to have to seal that and send it in down here, and then they'll count them right here at Tahlequah. Oh, I see. Uh, I think that's the way that'll come mm -hmm. out. Well, there probably won't be too much uh, uh, competition. Uh, no, I don't think so. To I don't think so. I don't think there's any question Keeney about it from my mind. Keeler well, done such a good, a job. good job, and then he's smart. He's smart enough. Well, yeah, that's, he's, he's, he's worked at I've it. I've heard him speak. I, I, I know him. <laughs> he likes him very much. 
uh, back to the uh, seminary. Uh, when the uh, uh, seminary building was changed, uh, the uh, female seminary, and was moved to here after that fire, and then this building was put up. About what year was that? Well, that was in 19 and 10 when they had the fire out there. Now but that was the uh, but the, 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 the male seminary was out there, and the female seminary was here. Mm -hmm. and then, then after the fire, they turned this into what they called a normal. That is oh, yeah. for school teachers to finish right. their, their education training. and uh -huh. training. And uh, it wasn't but this one building over here. No. And How much has it changed? Oh, it's changed a lot. You wouldn't know it. I didn't if I didn't know where yeah. that, you know. But they, they still keep the name, and it yeah. is that yeah. it is yeah. original, old. Now, that old seminary out, John, but that Indian uh, museum or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you notice there's, there's uh, two there. pillars there. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that is the original male seminary, and I think both the... That's where the fire was. No, that was part of the... No, they had two fires. They had this other one burn out, mm -hmm. too, but that was, I think the girls and boys both went to school together. That's what my father told mm -hmm. me because Bob Garrett was superintendent there, and that was way back before my time almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, you mentioned that your father was a white man, but that he came with the... He came with them. He's raised with them, see, and he talked their language better than they did. As far uh -huh. as well, well what, uh, uh, he raised with them because of... Uh, uh, the neighborhood in which he, yeah, he lived, lived on. yeah, uh -huh. and uh, of course, then there was very little distinction. Uh, yeah, it not. was just a, um, a neighborhood, a neighborhood, movement. neighborhood movement, and there's mm -hmm. a neighborhood surroundings here mm -hmm. in where they same lived. Same schools, yeah. And same yeah. interests, and same purchasing places, and yeah, that's right. Um, uh, do you remember something of early day Tahlequah? Well, uh, about. <laughs> Nineteen and eight. I don't believe that call that yes. earlier day or late. Yes. There wasn't very yes. much yes. here. It was a, few, a drugstore down there, and Thompson's had a hotel. Yes. And um, this old spring was open right down here. You used to water the horses at the spring right down here on the foot of the hill. You know where you go over that little place down there across the little walk over. Oh. There was a big spring there. Delco got their water there. That was the city water. Yeah, that's city water. And horse for horse, and they had a big trough there for the water your horse. My sister yeah. lived right up here, Mrs. Walking Stick, and had a horse. And I'd bring him down and water him every day for her. That's interesting. Yeah. But then Dogtown, well, that's what this was right back up here with this college. Dogtown. Dogtown. That, that's a tough part of town. Oh, that's what they called it. Yeah, Dogtown. And who, 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 did, who were they? Oh, they. Yeah. Well, that's what my my sister and, and everybody in town recognized that as it was the moonshiners and crapshooters that lived mm -hmm. up in there, you know. Well, I'll tell you a little deal. We had a ball was team it, out there. Were uh, there saloons and things there? No, there's oh. bootlegging in it. There's a bootlegging. bootlegging in it. Uh, one of the bo seminary boys killed a bootlegger over here one night. And we had a ball team, and he was the catcher. So we had a big game match for Sunday, and he was in jail. And we had to have him come over here, sent the professor Clark come over here and talk to the city, and they sent two officers out there with him. He caught the ball again. <laughs> <laughs> While the officers waited. While the officers waited, They yeah. got to see the game anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, early day history tells of the Cherokee Nation having very strict laws about criminals like this. They did. And uh, that even hangings That's right. were se very severe penalties. Well. And that perhaps kept them as, uh, uh, it, it kept them uh, respecting authority and law. They were people who did respect the law. Uh, do you remember any, how far back were the well, hangings? They, now my mother, uh, they moved to Stillwell, and Father had a store there, and she held uh, old Judge Parker, and you probably mm -hmm. heard of him. He held court over there ever, or once or From twice Fort ever, in Fort Smith. Mm -hmm. And she cooked for the court when they'd hold court, and fed all of them. Mm -hmm. And she told me that she'd stood in the kitchen door and saw 13 hung. And this is now, where was that, Stillwell? Stillwell, it's a west side of Bluff mm -hmm. Stillwell, it's us. 
they call it Strawberry Springs. It's in the same little neighborhood, so gone, you know, now. Well, is the, was there a tree or a scaffold? Well, they had a scaffold. And they but uh, they hung them hog stealing <laughs> over that. And then, then Judge Parker deserved his name. Oh, Judge, yeah. I read the book on him where he hung seven in one day. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a book on it, Hell on the Border. You ought to get hold of that and read it. It's true. What's the name of it? Hell on the Border. Who wrote it? Judge Parker's. It's, it's, it's his history. My old book's yellow. I've got it. It's old. But then. Um, wonder when it was published. I don't know. But I read that yeah. thing, and, and I know a lot of the people, you know, who they are. Yeah. And some of the people. And it's, it's true. I don't know where you'd find that. May not be in print. Uh, it may not be. Hell on the hell on the border. <laughs> and it's the biography it, of Dutch Park. Yeah. Well, I, I know a lot of it's true because I know about it, you know. And I'm, your mother witnessed the hanging. Yeah, she said she was, she saw mm -hmm. thirteen different people hung over there, mm -hmm. just from the kitchen door. The, mm -hmm. or the kitchen must have been close to this um, capital or something. I know that the Cherokees were very strict, and, and I know that that's one way they established their, um, their law and their order. Uh, was there ever any in Tahlequah, or do you remember of any hung here? No, uh, no, no, the only one that's been hung in, in Oklahoma was hung in, um, in Ottawa County mm -hmm. since statehood. That's the only one hanging that mm -hmm. uh, had. Well, but prior to statehood. Uh, when it was Indian territory. Well, no, they hung them on Fort Smith and, uh, and up here at this, where they had this capital, Spring. Strawberry Spring. It's mm -hmm. called Corn Snake Courthouse, what it was, that's the name of the place. Going, oh. Snake Court. Going Snake Courthouse. Court Court mm -hmm. Strawberry Spring. Yeah, well, that, now it's Strawberry Spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was Going Snake. Oh, yeah. That's the old name for it. Going Snake Courthouse. Uh huh. Well, that's interesting. Um, the. Um, uh, the, the law as applied by Judge Parker uh, <coughs> was evidence really very thorough. It certainly was. He was. He uh, was it. Uh, oh, they <coughs> they get you, fellow. They'd run him from now on. They caught him. They they all run to the territory. See when they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. But they it, got him. Then it wasn't the it wasn't this uh, element from. Places like Dogtown, as you call it. No. But it was the people who came. Coming and going both yeah, ways, see. Because they thought there was no law here. Yeah, that, that's what they run in here for. But they, they had marshals they out. out. They, they sent out marshals. And heck, them marshals, a lot of them kill them on the out. Uh, never brought them in. Mm -hmm, the federal. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this was considered by them a place where there would be no law. Exercise, yeah, that's right. But that's where they found out. No law. Different. Different. Mm -hmm. Because the Cherokees were very strict in the yeah. ones, and uh, uh, well, the, par the this department would have been, this would have been a very lawless thing. After it? that, uh, the Department of Interior that I was working for them had Indian police all over the country working with, with their field clerks, you know. In, in an age, in an Indian police, Indian police in Muskogee. Mm -hmm. Set up there all day long. I don't know what they do. They were, were they uniformed people? Or just uh, oh, some of them, some of them not. Mm -hmm. Most generally just plain clothes, but that's what mm -hmm. their position was. they were was. responsible to the uh, Indian government or yeah, just federal? Yeah, to, the both? Indian, the, to both. To both? To both, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, Indian uh, court, for instance, uh, uh, did they try their their own uh, tribal people that were in Arizona? Yeah, yeah, way back in the early days they did, and mm -hmm. and then if they sentenced him to be hung, or whatever his sentence was, mm -hmm. if he wanted to go home and stay a month, they let him go home and stay a month and come back. He go home and straighten up his spirit. Mm -hmm. There never was one failed to come back. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did they enforce that? They didn't. End, they, didn't they just told him, and that's it. They had that much. Had much, that much confidence. And selfish. Selfish and respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and a lot of them come back and be hung. But they didn't. Have to yeah. Mm -hmm. There was no bond. Uh, and then just his word. He to tell you how long he had the business he wanted to take care of. How long it take him? Uh, grant him his time and he come back. You I worked uh, here what uh, no several years ago in the sheriff. I worked sheriff's office longer. Up in the jail, we had no linen up there. 
So he, he wanted to work on the road and get paid double time. Mm -hmm. Told him, all right, he went out there and he didn't come in when they left him. They'd gone. So he sent me word that he had to go home, cut some squall wood. He'd be back in 10 days. 10 days, he'd come back. <laughs> You're going to run out of strength. No. I've got a little bit more yet. <laughs> this story. Uh, uh, tell me something more about your mother and uh, your father on the train of tears. Well, about Were they in a wagon? Or well, they had a wagon. Walk? They had. A, she said she walked all the way. There wasn't room in the wagon. They had all they this stuff. They brought their household goods. They put everything they could bring, you see. Mm -hmm. And then they brought these cows. Yes. Tied them cows behind the wagon. And I think they brought How a little... How long were they on there? Oh, I don't know how long they've been on there, a long time, 12. It's a very severe It was a long walk, she told me. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of sickness. Who gave it the name of the Trail of Tears? Do you remember? No, I don't. But I have not. They developed that themselves. As they came along. As they come along. What else could it have been? That's right. And uh, I have often wondered whether that was a historian. Or whether it no, was the people I crowd. think the people that, that was on the trail on the trail, trail. Mm -hmm. because it was you know there was bound to be tears because oh, they lost so many of them. They, they had a lot of sickness. Um, how many? What percentage was it that died on the trail? I don't remember I've that. I've forgotten the number. I know there's quite a lot of them, according to what she told me. Mm -hmm. And the ones that did get through felt very yeah. fortunate. Yeah. Honest. Um, they. Uh, uh, these these stories of the Trail of Tears should be recorded, and uh, as many as you can remember, uh, you should we should get those for now. Yeah. If you can kind of call back and make notes on it, we ought to get those stories. If well, you, uh, you just have to patch them up from place to place. Uh, well, if you can keep your notes, we yeah. can do the rest. If you well, could, I I don't know if all you that all I know. Again on it and uh, and if you could. Remember some of the well, I know she told me that uh, now she was 12 years old mm -hmm. and that they walked all the way and that she said she waded the stream this deep mm -hmm. getting across them mm -hmm. and, and they walked from in down to uh, Fort Smith and the army followed them uh, the men did so they put them on a boat and pushed and put the boat took them over on the other side of the river and that's where they quit them and that's about all I know about that. Um, if, uh, if we could get more of the actual happenings on Yeah, the, what took place. Uh -huh, no. Real, by real people yeah. like Well, that. they're all gone. Well, I mean they are, but, but you, yeah. Yeah. you see, yeah. that was a total to you. Yeah, a person yeah, yeah. 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 It's important, yeah. very important to us as history. Yeah. Well, thank you so all much. Right. It's been so nice to um, talk with you, and right. I've enjoyed it so much. Here you are. Um,